A very warm welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I'm Siddharth Panayak Patankar. With me today I have not one but two of one of the most anticipated cars of the year. It's funny how I use that so often these days because that's where the market is. Anything new is what excites this otherwise very depressed market. The Kia Seltos is the beginning of a new chapter in many ways. Of course, Kia's first product for India, so a new brand, but also in many ways, a car that's setting brand new benchmarks in the compact SUV segment. We will now tell you just why. The Kia Seltos is in many ways the perfect car for the company to begin its India innings. A compact SUV with the styling, features and tech to really hit the sweet spot as far as what customers are looking for. That becomes doubly important given how automobile sales have been falling off a cliff of late. The Seltos is getting here as Kia's first made in India car and will be available in multiple variants. It has eight color options and five dual tone variations added on. We are in not so sunny Goa to drive the car. And yes, we have a diesel and petrol with us. Before the rain descends on me yet again, a little bit of a drizzle has begun. Let me tell you a little bit about the two big trims that Kia is bringing. Now you have three variants each in those two trims and across the range, 16 variants, 16 options between powertrain and uh, transmission and of course trim. So this is the tech line and uh, this is of course the top end version of the tech line. So you get all the bells and whistles on it. And the big differentiation between this and this car, which is the GT line, well, the GT line is the one that has certain visual embellishments which are a little sporty. So you've got the GT line badging up here, which is, of course, remember Kia's sporty badging for its products globally. You've also got the red stripe and the scuff plate element that's been put into this bumper. Again, to give the car a little bit of a sporty stance, different appeal to this one. As you can see, that's the one big difference. You don't have that element here. and. Uh, it's trying to be a little bit more classy and upmarket as a result. The grille though with its textured chrome and that pattern in here is the same on both the cars as is the little lighting element that you see running all the way out to the DRL. Now this is the parking light so you'll see the, the long LED stripe light up only at night. The regular DRL if you will is just this element the heartbeat and of course the full LED headlamp cluster on the top end car. That again is the same on both cars. So having that little extra stripe running into the grille, it's going to be a great signature for this car. You'll straight away recognize it coming down the road. The other differences between the two in terms of the tech and GT line, well, you've got the little red elements again, the hubcap and the red brake calipers up front, different alloy pattern, which is two-tone. On the tech line, you can see it's a, also a smart alloy pattern, but it is, of course, very different. Along the side, I have to say, the 7 DCT badge is kind of loud and, well, kind of reminds me of another car that claims to have internet inside, but I'm not going to go there right now. You've got the red stripe along the side as well. I have to say it would look better on, in fact, I almost wish our white car was GT line and the red one was tech, so you could really see those red elements pop out. It would look better on some of the other colors. GT line badging at the back as well, and the TGDI badge here tells you that this red car is the uh, 1.4 petrol. Now, a little bit of that sporty element in that bumper again with the red stripe, of course. That's pretty much where the GT line elements uh, taper off. The other thing I have to point out to you though is this one's of course the diesel, remember. The Bharat Stage 6 or Bharat 6 badge that's back here. Now that one's pretty relevant because unlike many other manufacturers who are claiming to be BS6 ready, Kia says there's a distinction. These cars are BS6 compliant from day one. But they'll also still run on the current fuel that's available without a problem. It claims that it's done a lot of extensive testing. Should be no issue driving these cars from day one. Roof 
roof rails, a stylish glossy black geometric grid grill, and some variants get a sunroof and that two-tone roof with black or orange contrast options. The cabin on the Seltos is going to impress you for a couple of reasons. One, that it brings in, of course, a fresh appeal in terms of styling, in terms of layout, in some, terms of some of the features and functions and gadgets, for sure. But two, because it will also set new benchmarks for this segment. And uh, that's going to be something that the competitors are going to have to really bring because, yeah, this takes things up quite high. A nice display for the uh, climate control system, kind of blends in beautifully. You've got a good sense of materials and plastics here. Huge 10.25 inch screen and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are standard on that. So that's nice. And uh, of course, you've got the navigation with the map. Nice full view. You can have a split view as well. Let's go back to the home screen. And, uh, you know, sh some shortcut keys down here. So there's setup, media, radio, nav, map, and the volume control. And then you've also got navigation as a, uh, and phone uh, and some of the favorites that you can run as shortcuts up here. Going to the full menu, and there's, of course, tons to take you through. But uh, let me focus on the one thing that's really impressed me. Smart Pure Air. Inbuilt air purifier on this car. Now, that's a world first, says Kia, and it's certainly going to shake things up because right now I'm in a great environment, but uh, typically in most of our cities, that's really relevant. It shows you the AQI reading, also gives you a perfume option, so you can have ambient air, which is a really high-end car feature, isn't it? And then you've got the rear screen. So there's a little screen back here with a display, which tells you, again, what the AQI reading is. And, uh, and that's, again, nice for the people sitting in the back to also keep track of that if you don't have the display on this screen at that time. So that screen is going to impress you. Well, then you've got the head-up display as well. That is something that's, again, a huge segment first. Not all variants will have it, obviously, but uh, it's nice to have that. And it's bigger than the one you get on, a say, a Mini, where, again, it pops up just like this one. You've also got a 7-inch screen here, which has excellent animation, good resolution, and again, sets a new benchmark in this segment because it's not only big, but even the kind of animation you see and the information you get on it, you've got the torque and turbo outputs, you've got compass, you've got tire pressures that are going to be live readings, and you've got, uh, of course, the usual trip computer settings like the fuel economy, the driving range, and you know what's happening with your car, the drive information for your trip. All of that is in there as well. Now, this is the GT line, so this is the GTX. So it's one below the GTX Plus, which means there are a few things that you don't get on this one, like seat ventilation. But I may run you through all that on the HTX Plus that we have on the diesel. But having said that, because it's the GT line, you get black interiors. Looks quite nice and sporty. Little red stitching elements all around and the GT line badging on the seat as well. And uh, the flat bottom steering wheel with red stitching, GT line badge again. And some of the other common elements, of course, are the piano black and dull metal finishes that you see all around. So well put together. And like I said, something that's going to get a lot of attention and scare a lot of the rivals. Yes. Are you now understanding why we believe this car will establish new benchmarks in the segment? The Renault Duster and Capture, Mahindra XUV500, Tata Harrier, MG Hector, and even the darling of the segment, the Hyundai Creta and the upcoming Maruti XL6 will all seem a little dated or inadequate by comparison. If looks and features weren't enough to floor you, the drivetrain options will. The Seltos has two petrol and one diesel option from Word Go. And as I already told you, they're all BS6 compliant. It's a master stroke from Kia to bring in three different drivetrains, each with automatic or manual, and three different technologies on automatic as well. A game changer? You bet. Outside of that, you also have to mention the fact that uh, you also get a very advanced option with the 1.4 GDI, the turbo GDI, and it's coupled of course with the DCT transmission. Now why is that a big deal? Because if you are one of those who wants uh, slightly sportier driving, relatively speaking on an SUV, that's the combination that's going to give it to you because uh, not only is it the most responsive, it's also the one that comes with the different drive modes. So you've got normal, you've got eco, and then you've got sport. So it is only the DCT, GDI combination that gives you these different drive modes. You also get different traction modes. 
like snow and mud but uh, remember that has nothing to do with the four wheel drive system that's not an option across the Seltos range the one big chink in the Seltos is armor and this is different from the car that I drove as a prototype in Korea the steering it seems kind of softened up for India in some senses and uh, you know I can get that a lot of Indian drivers will actually like that it's really smooth and soft but yeah I personally would have liked it to be a little stiffer like the cars I had driven having said that that's where again the advantage comes in on the GDI with the DCT because of the drive modes again so you get the sport mode where things do stiffen up a bit and I quite like the way the steering feels now in sport mode but all this aside the big USP the thing that's going to stand out and set benchmarks for the Seltos ride and handling the handling is not bad for a car of this size and shape and height but it's the right quality that's going to set new parameters in terms of comfort in terms of just what people will start to expect and what will impress a lot of buyers including those who sit at the back. So the ride quality will be this car's hallmark. The 1.4 GDI has a claimed mileage of 16 and a half kilometers per liter for the automatic and 16.1 kilometers per liter for the manual. The Seltos also gets a 1.5 litre petrol with 113 bhp and this gets the option of a 6-speed manual or a CVT auto gearbox. We've not tested that car but it is a tried and tested motor from the Kia Hyundai family. Claimed mileage on that comes in at 16.8 kilometres per litre for the auto and 16.5 for the manual. The car's diesel avatar next and Amea has been busy driving that, so over to him now. The one I'm driving is the 1.5 litre diesel. So this makes 113 brake horsepower and there is 250 Newton meters of torque on offer. Now that torque actually kicks in at around 1750 rpm. There is good amount of torque available at that RPM and yes, it does pick up pretty well too. But there is a distinct noise coming out of that engine from say around 3000 RPM but you don't really do that in city conditions now do you? What is impressive is the way that power is available to you at that lower an RPM. So it really helps in city driving. Uh, what is of note here though is uh, that clutch, though light, the travel is pretty long and uh, that is why you don't enjoy driving this one really. But that light clutch does make a difference. But the gear shifts are really nice, flick of the wrist and uh, the gears are changed. Exceptionally good job here done by Kia. And overall ride and handling is pretty much the same as the petrol. So a big thumbs up on the diesel engine especially. Uh, because it has a good grunt and power and torque available for you. The Seltos is loaded to the gills with equipment. While we do expect some base versions, most buyers are likely to opt for the better equipped models. I already showed you the GT Line's cabin. Now let's see the Tech Line 2, shall we? And as promised, the top spec as well. So there are a lot of changes that you see here. Uh, the first big change is the upholstery. It's beige and not black. And it gets this beautiful honeycomb kind of pattern. And of course the perforations in there uh, point out to the fact that these are ventilated seats. And you know we love ventilated seats. The two buttons are right here and you can kickstart operations there. What it also gets is a sunroof. The addition of that really makes a difference now in uh, compact SUVs, so yes, the Seltos gets that too. Uh, the carpet, if you see, is completely different. It's not monotone, but it's something that, you know, is different and that's what even sets that apart. 
from its uh, competitors. What is also important to know that this one also gets wireless charging. You also get wireless charging on uh, the GT line as well, but this one has it too. What it does not get is a heads up display, but there are other changes that are made. The driver's seat is electronically powered, so you can adjust it. Uh, and there's no manual adjustment as such, it's just electronically powered, and that's pretty good too. Now at the rear, you have a rear sunshade, for the rear passengers which comes in really handy when the sun is pretty very harsh actually so all these changes make a, a clear difference and a clear demarcation between both the gt line and the tech line Well, to be fair, some of those distinctions are also based on the variant level and not just the tech or GT line. It doesn't come as a surprise that the Seltos SUV is a connected car. And yes, it gets UVO. So, uh, let's, let's check out what that's all about, what all it has to offer. To begin with, you can start your engine, you can lock the doors. And of course, the climate control settings are, can be easily handled from here. And the horns and lights. And of course, you can stop the engine from here. Then there is my trip, which basically tells you where all uh, you have been through this. And the duration, the distance, the speed, and also the maximum speed you have been to uh, in whenever you have uh, been out anywhere. So the VHR is the vehicle health report which basically tells you if there is any problem with the brakes, the airbags, the tire pressure monitoring system. So everything uh, related to the engine and uh, the basic parts that you see, it's all here in vehicle report. Then there is of course the profile where you can change your pin, you can terminate your account, uh, the emergency contacts and even the preferred customer care language. Now, it is a Vodafone idea who are working on this uh, very network thing, uh, on this eSIM. And uh, it's basically a free subscription for three years that Kia is offering. Post that, the customer will have to pay um, uh, the fees of um, the, the service provider. Of course, you also have the Smart Pure Air, which uh, basically means you, it, you can start the purifier before entering the car so there you have the aqi inside car so it says that the air quality inside the car is very good uh, and uh, here's the graph which basically shows when it started and uh, how bad the air is so all of that it's pretty simple to understand and uh, pretty easy uh, to do of course everything at the touch of a button we expect the 1.4 petrol and 1.5 diesel to give us three variants each for both auto and manual. While the 1.5 petrol is unlikely to get the top end GTX plus trim and so we'll only have two variants each both for manual and auto. But this one gets something more <laughs> and that is the mood lighting. Yes, it gets mood lighting. So whatever song that's playing on your infotainment system, uh, there'll be colors right across the car just to give you that additional fun element when it comes to driving and listening to music. So yes, there might be those greens and reds to drive away your blues. Some of what you see is what you'd usually find on a premium or luxury brand car. So kudos to Kia for bringing all of this in. Now the big question is, will all of that cost a lot? Well, the launch is not so far away now and we shall find out how Kia is pricing this car. There will be three considerations, I reckon. The state of the market and pressure on sales, Kia's keenness to get off to a blockbuster start in India and where sister company Hyundai will price its upcoming second generation Creta that while rivaling the Seltos will also share a lot of its equipment, drivetrains and platform of course. 
The current Creta starts at 10 lakh rupees and goes up to 15 lakh 65,000. So I expect the Seltos to start at 11 and top off at 16 lakh rupees. X showroom. So that's it on the show. You have to react to the Kia Seltos. Prices will only be out at the launch on the 22nd of August. We'll have all those details for you. Please wear your seatbelts. Bye-bye.